What's up guys? Here's a very, very quick lesson about how to use the array modifier. The array modifier is crucial for creating repetition. All right, I like the array modifier because it gives you a lot of control. Uh, check this out. I've got this file open and <clears throat> just gonna hide Suzanne. That's the monkey head right now. So I'm just clicking on that visibility button in the outliner. And you guys can see that if I click on the real time button, to disable my array modifier. I've only got one single mushroom here. Let me re-enable the array modifier by clicking on this monitor icon. It looks kind of like a monitor. Okay, and you can see that I can increase the count. So I've got four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Let's just put 10 mushrooms. If I have relative offset checked, that means that I can adjust the X offset, okay? Like how much space there is along the X axis, how much space there is along the Y axis, and of course, how much space separates these duplicates along the Z axis. Okay, but let's say I choose, let's say I wanna do a little more with it. Well, I can uncheck relative offset. What happened? Well. Now there are 10 duplicates all in the exact same spot. I can choose to adjust how they look by checking object offset. And then I have to choose the control object, okay, or the offset object. And that'll be this monkey head. It could be anything. Usually people use something called an empty object. There's a whole list of different empty objects you can use. And the reason people use them is because empty objects don't get rendered out and uh, that way you don't have to worry about turning them off before rendering. But I'm, I'm just showing that you can use something like another piece of geometry. Okay, what do you have to do if you're using object offset? You definitely wanna make sure that, well, anytime you're using the ray modifier, make sure you reset your transforms. So take a look at my transforms here for the mushroom. Anything that you're creating duplicates of, make sure you zero out um, make sure you zero out or reset the rotation values and reset the scale, okay? And you can do that by hitting Control A and you could just apply rotation or apply scale. Sometimes you do wanna apply location, but uh, that's only if you wanna change that origin point. Another thing you wanna do is beware of where the origin point is and are you gonna be using an, using object offset or not, okay? Let me just show you guys what I'm gonna do here. I'm using Suzanne as my object offset. Okay, there's there's 10 mushrooms. And if I select this monkey head and then start rotating it along the Z axis, you can start to spin this and, and adjust the, the formation here because I'm rotating that object. I could also start scaling this monkey head and if I start scaling the monkey head, that will create a, an effect here where all the duplicates start to get smaller and smaller. Okay. Now, I'm going to keep this the same size at 111. And that's what I'm talking about, guys. You got to be aware are you using an object to offset these objects or not? And let's say I want the mushrooms to be in a circle around the origin. Well, then I gotta make sure that my original object's origin is at the center or maybe exactly where the, the monkey head is. Well, I've already got my cursor here. You can, you can always move your cursor with shift right click, but if you hit shift C, that moves the cursor back to the origin and then I'm going to right click over this piece of geometry and choose origin to 3D cursor. Now when I turn my array modifier back on, you'll see that I've got I've got all my duplicated objects from the array modifier spinning around Suzanne. Okay, I just created 10 of them. And since there's 360 degrees in a circle, let's see 360 divided by 10 mushrooms should be 36 degrees apart.
All right, perfect. Okay, I probably use the array modifier most often for for creating um, radial type of effects, putting putting things in a circle around something like birthday candles, um, maybe creating a tire or a wheel. All right, guys, play around with the array modifier. Make sure you guys check your transforms on the original object that you're duplicating. Decide where you want the origin to go. And if you're using an object offset or not, you're gonna have to manage two pieces of two objects in order to get the look you want, okay? Try this out. Talk to you guys later.